why Social Security benefits are better than you think. Hmm. Let's read this. Uh, my man Alan has sent me this article. I have yet to read it. So let's uh, let's read it together, shall we? Asset Builder. Isn't that uh, what's his name? Scott Burns' uh, place? I think it is. AssetBuilder.com. Uh, dateline October 29, 2020. All right. Andrew Hallam. Andrew Hallam. Let's see if they tell us who old Andrew is. Uh, he's a digital nomad. He's the author of Millionaire Teacher and Millionaire Expat, How to Build Wealth Living Overseas. Yeah, Scott Burns. I forgot. Uh, I thought he was on this. All right. So let's take a gander. Actually, I want, I want to read this article, too. I, I'm not a big fan of Scott uh, politically. Uh, he's he's one of these guys who easily succumb to fear mongering. And uh, it actually bothered from a green climate stuff. Oh, God, for the love of me. And on top of that, the uh, uh, the the uh, the COVID stuff as well. He just uh, he's just a wealthy guy who actually has written some good stuff. Not going to lie to you, but easily easily uh, browbeaten into thinking that everything is collapsing around him. Sad. Uh, but this is from 2003. I talk about planning for the tax on Social Security benefits. So I, I want to read that. We'll see uh, where that comes. I'll read that next because that. Um, no one was talking about tax on social security benefits back then. So I want to see, I'd, I'd be interested to see where that shakes out. Anyway, let's go. And again, I'm a big fan of Scott and Larry Kotlikoff, another big lib, uh, who had written spend till the end. That book had a huge impact on my life as a planner and as a, just a, as a human being as well. So as much as Scott drives me crazy with his insanity about green energy and how we're all going to die in a, a global heat and the COVID stuff, um, those two things had an impact on me, so I'll always give him credit for that. All right, so this guy says, two years ago, I had dinner with an American couple that worked in Tanzania. Uh, the, the adventurous couple raised their children in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Indonesia. Now in their 60s, they were thinking about retiring. We qualify for Social Security, they said. I said. We left the U.S. when we were 22, so we couldn't contribute. But we saved a lot of money, and Social Security doesn't pay much, so moving overseas was our best financial move. And then I uh, dig in my fork. I uh, I asked uh, that my wife made my wife quint, cringe. How much do you have? And they smiled and said, "We have about eight hundred thousand bucks." Oh boy! Then I went to the uh, <laughs> the latest Transamerica re uh, retirement study was in two thousand fifteen. It reported the Americans in their sixties had a median investment portfolio valued at one hundred seventy two thousand. My friend said more than that. Okay. But if they remained in the United States instead of moving abroad, they might have been able to enjoy a better retirement without saving a penny. Here's why. The average Social Security benefit was 1500 bucks in January of 2020. My friends worked their full careers of professions that earn above average income. If they had remained in the U.S., they might have qualified for a combined 3000 a month. What, in, in Social Security? If they had remained in the U.S., they might have qualified for a combined 3000 a month. Now, they certainly have more than 3000 a month. Uh, my friends, 800000 sounds like a lot of money. But for them, I believe Social, Secu Social Security payments would pay more. A basic assumption on the 4% rule, back-tested studies, blah, blah, blah. For 4% of 800000 is 32000 That's my friend's 800000 portfolio is worth 32000 a year. That's less than what Social Security might have paid them. Uh, we're doing pretty well, aren't we? And I stuffed my Tanzanian bread in my mouth while considering how to answer. If you want to enjoy high standard of living, I know great places in Mexico, Costa Rica, and Malaysia, I said. They weren't opposed to that, but there's so much shock. We have so much more money than our friends in the U.S. We, shouldn't be, should, we should be able to retire much easier than them, shouldn't they? I said that might not be the case. I explained how much their friends might receive in Social Security benefits, and then I explained how much their portfolio uh, was worth based on the 4% rule. They just uh, they just sat back in shock. So you're saying we could have stayed in the U.S., not saved a penny, and we'd be better off financially than we are now? There's always a chance you have earned less than 1500 each per month from Social Security, I said. Well, they, they did save. This, the idea that you didn't save a penny is just it's stupid. It's a stupid thing to say. Of course they saved. They saved 6.2% a year as did their employer. It's easy to miss Dismissed the benefits of Social Security, but it's worth more than you might think. A retiree, retiree receiving 1500 bucks a month would require an investment portfolio of 45, uh, 450000 just to equal that amount. A retiree uh, receiving a combined 3600 uh, 3, from Social Security would require almost $1.1 million 
to match what Uncle Sam provides. Well, Uncle Sam didn't provide it. You paid for it. According to the Trans America study, it has 29% of Americans in their 60s report knowing a great deal about Social Security. To maximize your benefits, it's important to know how it works. Social Security might not remain as generous forever. People are living longer. The pro program's coffers are somewhat stressed. But in one shape or another, these benefits will keep uh, coming. After all, the National Institute of Retirement Security says 40% of Americans receive no other income. So you'll be, unless you continue, unless you expect half your nation's retirees to be begging on the streets, the benefits will continue for Social Security. I could not agree more. All right, a pretty good article. I got no qualms. I mean, it's stupid that idea that you're not saving and you are saving to Social Security. That's dumb. They're not only going to get 3000 a month if they're making above average income. They're going to be more than that. I mean, I guess... I guess what he's saying is that the, the average benefit is fifteen hundred bucks. I guess that's what he's saying, but that's not. That, that's where they're saying they're saying, "Hey, the husband will make fifteen hundred, the wife will make fifteen hundred because the average benefit is fifteen hundred. That, that's just that's stupid. But I get, I see what he's saying. I mean, they're both probably going to make twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight hundred. So you're looking at five thousand a month between them. Can't beat that in just an eight hundred thousand dollar portfolio. And again, I don't like the four percent rule, but I mean, let's just say they make five thousand a month between them. Uh, what do we do? 5,000 divided by point, uh, 0 0.05. Yeah, no, 5,000, 5,000 divided by 0.95. Is that right? They need $5 million. So, oh, wait, no, that's not for the, hold on a second. We got 5,000, 60,000. That's what it is. Divide by 0 0.05. Uh, they need 1.2 million to be able to take 5,000 a year out or a month out or $60,000 at 5%. So they need 1.2 and they only got 800,000. So yeah, they, uh, they didn't do good enough. That's for sure. That's for sure. All right. Anyway, uh, I'd like to hear your comments on that. I, I agree with it actually. It's a, a decent article. Good way to look at it. So thanks. We'll see ya.